on September 7th, Chandrayaan 2 will be landing on the moon, and it's a very exciting event. Uh, it's going to learn about the composition of the moon, plus the orbiter will be mapping the moon for, for different uh, chem you know, chemistries, looking for minerals there. So it's very exciting to have uh, Chandrayaan 2 landing on the moon on September 7th. And I think it's going to help NASA's program as well because NASA will be landing astronauts on the moon in, in about five years from now. And whatever we learn from this mission will greatly help the astronauts five years from now as well. So I think it's very, very exciting. You should be so proud to be part of the uh, team here landing on the moon. Uh, there is a lot of talk about uh, setting up space stations on the moon so that it becomes easier to move to other planets. Is that a feasibility at all that this could happen? Yeah. There's a question about putting space stations around the moon, and one of the first things NASA is going to do is put a small station, space station, it's called Gateway, and it's going to be orbiting around the moon, so the astronauts will launch from Earth, go to that mini space station, stay there for a few days before they take their lander down to the surface of the moon. So it won't be permanently occupied like our International Space Station is, but they'll send crews from time to time. They'll use that orbiting station called Gateway to do uh, either studies of the moon from orbit or use it as a base to go down to the surface of the moon. And also there's a sudden spurt in the number of missions that are going to the moon now. What is the reason? China went to the dark side of the moon now. There's a lot of interest in the moon. You know, the United States landed on the moon 50 years ago. And it didn't take long for the Americans to get bored with that. And what they, they say is, we went to the moon and we discovered how beautiful the Earth is. Some of the first images of the Earth taken from the moon where you see that blue ball in the blackness of space, it really changed people's perspective of our planet. And so for the next 50 years, we've been focusing on the Earth. The space shuttle and the International Space Station orbiting around the Earth we do medical experiments for the benefit of Earth. We try to do a lot of other science that would benefit Earth as well. But now we're ready to go out and explore once again. So we're building a new generation of rockets to go to the moon and, and go on to Mars. We think Mars landing is maybe 20, 25 years from now. So it's great to have not this competition, but just this interest and the countries working together to have many different countries landing on the moon and, and sharing our information with one another. I think that's good preparation for maybe a mission to Mars where we'd also like to work together. And there's also this reusable rocket technology that's now picking up uh, pace. On the space shuttle, we were the, the space shuttle was the first program to reuse the rockets. So we used the solid rocket boosters, we used the reuse the space shuttles. Space shuttle Discovery flew in space 39 times. No other spacecraft has flown so much in space. And so Elon Musk with SpaceX has picked up on that and is reusing his first stage of his Falcon rockets. So that's the new wave. So we're bringing the price down. If you reuse over and over, you can bring the price down on your launches. And that's gonna open it up to space tourism as well, getting more people to orbit the Earth. And the more people they get to see with their eyes what I saw from space, I think the more people we're going to have here on Earth watching out for our planet. Asteroids are going to hit the Earth? You know, asteroids have hit the Earth many times in the past. We've got craters on the Earth, and you look at the moon, the moon is heavily cratered. These are from asteroids and comets, that, so it happens over time. Uh, it happened early in our solar system. It's not happening as much today. But over time, there's going to come an event where an asteroid is heading towards Earth. We've had some near misses before, but they're still thousands and thousands of kilometers away. Um, we may have to come up with a way to deflect it, maybe to put an engine on it to move its orbit a little bit so that it will miss Earth. That's also that next month that's going to be as far as Yeah. Next month, the asteroid is going to hit the Earth. I haven't heard any scientific studies of that. There's always these claims that are out there, but I don't think I'm still paying my bills for next month, so it won't stop me. Any your practical experience? Practical experience. The practical experience of being in space? Yes. Yeah, we are reading newspapers. So, what is the practical experience? 
yeah, you know, we we eat in space, but we don't have a refrigerator or freezer, so our food is freeze dried. It's cooked food, they freeze it, remove all the moisture, they put it in small plastic packages, and once we get to space, we have to add hot water, the food will soften up, and then you can eat it again. The food is okay, it's not delicious. I tell people I would never go to a restaurant that was serving space food. It's not that good, but it's okay for space. Things like uh, taking a shower, we don't have a shower, we don't have a bathtub up there, so we do sponge baths. We just get some soapy water, hot soapy water, put it on a washcloth, and we give ourselves a sponge bath. So some things are a little more difficult in space. Using the toilet, you have to clamp yourself down onto it so you don't float off. Some things are a little more complicated, other things are very easy. If I'm working on something, I can just let go of those pieces in the float right there. So you never lose them in space. Tomorrow there is going to be a video presentation by a dancer. He's a space experience in Sakai University. If you are all interested, please come. There's a very interesting video for 20 minutes. We'll talk about how we eat and sleep and exercise, what life is like up in space. I want to think about the countries which have uh, the eagerness of countries <laughs> to, to make themselves powerful, uh, to explore the space, particularly the moon or to the Mars. Uh, do you think that this is a healthy competition or not? Do I think it's a competition? Yeah. Right now, it, it is not a competition. You know, early in the space program, it was the United States and the Soviet Union. We had a space race. It was a definite, definite competition and a political competition. Right now, I don't see it that way. We have the International Space Station. We have 15 different countries that are involved with the work up on the International Space Station. We have astronauts from Russia, United States, Canada, Japan, Italy, Germany, all flying together in space. And I think that's a really good model for how we should go to Mars in the future. It would be my dream that the first mission to Mars isn't from one country. It's not representing just the United States or just China or just India or just Russia. I think when we send the first crew to Mars, it ought to represent planet Earth and be truly representative of planet Earth and maybe have it a, a multi-country event when we send our crews there. Probably how many days, how many days have you been in the space for continuously? In space, uh, a total of my four missions, 44 days. My longest flight was 16 days. And that was a long time, 22 years ago. Today, it's not long at all. We have astronauts up on the International Space Station routinely for six months at a time. Yeah, you know, a lot of people uh, compare the, they talk about the competition between NASA and the space a other space agencies and the private companies, but it, it is more of a cooperation. Uh, SpaceX, one of our private companies in the United States, NASA is paying them to launch our supplies up to the space station. And NASA is paying them to launch our astronauts starting later this year, early next year. So it is very much a cooperative agreement, you know, a cooperative work on the project. And when we go to Mars, I hope it's multinational, and I know it will be a lot of private companies that are involved as well. Maybe building the landers, maybe building the habitats, maybe building the spacesuits, but it's gonna take uh, a lot of different countries and many private corporations helping out to undertake a mission like going to Mars. The moon is difficult. It's difficult to go to the moon. Going to Mars, even more difficult by orders of magnitude. Sir, how how we astronauts should prepare for a space tour? How do the astronauts prepare? Yeah, physically and mentally. You know, for my first flight, uh, I trained for four years. Four years of training for a 15-day trip to space. So there's a lot you have to know. And much of our training is what to, to do in case something breaks. And it's gonna be even more important for those trips to Mars, because you're far from home. If something breaks, you can't come back and fix it. If somebody has a medical issue, you can't get them to a hospital very quickly. You know, you have to be self-sufficient. So trips to space, to the space station, going to the moon, going to Mars, takes a lot of preparation, a lot of training. Astronauts spend a lot of time in classrooms like our students do. Uh, we also spend time in simulators, models of the space station or models of the space shuttle, practicing the procedures, learning where every switch 
and, and the meter is so that you know when you get to space you're very familiar and comfortable with the environment so a lot of preparation just to go to space for a, a two-week mission any physical changes you are getting after the the physical changes when you go in space, uh, there's three big things that happen. Our muscles get weaker because with zero gravity, you don't use your muscles at all. That comes back. When you come back to Earth, you can get your muscle strength back. A second thing that happens in space, our bones get weaker. We lose about 1.5% of our bone every month in space. So our astronauts on the space station who are up there for six months, they do a lot of resistive exercise, weight training to build up their bones to keep them from getting weak in space. And when you come back to Earth, what you lose in a month in space, it takes about a year to gain that back. So our astronauts coming back from space station, it takes a few years for them to get their bones back to normal. The third part of being in space is you're exposed to a little more radiation. It's not too significant when you're in Earth orbit, like on the space shuttle like I was or the International Space Station. But when you go to the moon, when you go to Mars, you leave the protective area of the Earth's magnetic field. And the radiation levels go up significantly once you get, you know, 1,000, 2,000 kilometers above the Earth. And so you get the full brunt of cosmic radiation, solar radiation, and we don't know how to minimize that yet. We're still working on that. How do, how do you protect the astronauts from the radiation in space? It's a big issue yet. Sir,